We'll grab a quick word with each of the drivers, hopefully. And there we go. So first of all, from the USA, it's Dakota Fend. Got calm down yet from the last chance qualifier? Yeah, uh, car was good in the semi. Uh, we kind of kept everything the same for the last chance qualifier. Um, and then just did our best to freshen up as much as we could. Um, fresh oil on the disc, fresh oil on the shocks. Made sure the engine was good to go and got some uh, fresh J-concept kicks on here. So we'll see. We're starting last. This is what we did last time we were here. Um, went through the last chance as well. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully I can get a clean start and work my way up pretty uh, pretty early on and then just kind of go from there. Great stuff. Thank you, Dakota. And in position 12 from Italy, it's Ricardo Berton. Ricardo, you've made the final with the new Infinity. You must be very pleased. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I'm very happy to be to be here like two years ago. Uh, this is my tour final in a row at World Championship. So yeah, we were a bit lucky when when as the last lap was a bit difficult. But uh, yeah, I'm happy to be here. Let's see what the final brings. And next up in position 11 from Portugal, Bruno Coelho. Too many mistakes in the semi. Uh, yes and no. <laughs> yeah, as I said on the on the previous um, on the previous interviews, uh, I knew that the the world would be about the tires. And uh, one more, we are at the final. And I think from the the 13 guys at the final, nobody's really 100 percent sure about the tires. Uh, and I'm included on that on that list. So the car was super difficult to drive on semi. We changed completely the tires from from the the qualifiers to now. Uh, and you know now is just a gamble, and uh, I think who will be the best, or who decide the best on the tires, will be the guy that will be on the point. Best of luck, Bruno. Thank you very much. And uh, next up, it's uh, okay. from Denmark, no. Marcus Kerrup. Okay. Marcus, are you surprised to be in this final? <laughs> yeah, a bit. I mean, uh, it's it's very nice. I mean, uh, standing here, I'm I'm still on. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean. It's, it's amazing. Great stuff. Next up, in position nine from the United States of America, it's Mason Fuller. Mason, um, you confused us all. We didn't, we, 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 we drove straight into the final. Did you know you qualified at the end of that one? Uh, my car on the headset didn't really know, so I didn't really know. I figured I had like less crashes than the other guys in the other final. So I was actually like third fastest in the other final. But um, yeah, I just tried not to crash and see what I could do. Great stuff, thank you. And in position eight, from Spain, it's Robert Battle. Robert, 20 years of world finals, one world championship. What do you hope, what do you hope for this one? I don't know, my, my goal coming here was to be in the main final, so I just got it. Now, to be honest, I will have fun with the throttle as much as I can. And trying to be top five would be a really good result, so... Let's, let's do this. Best luck now in seventh place from Portugal, Hal Figueiredo. Okay. Lee Techno running the, uh, with the European team. It's all kind of come together for you, isn't it? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's been a crazy week. Uh, we started like struggling and every day we were improving. Last day of qualifying was yeah, But then, I mean, I think I just put my head down for the semi. Car was really good. Uh, Joba, clean semi, no mistake. So, enjoy the main now. Go for it. In sixth place, What's representing it Turkey, it's Burak Kilic. Burak, a big improvement in, for both you and your brother over the past couple of days of running. I mean, I feel awesome now. I just want to make the main and that's what matters. I'm happy. Great stuff. In fifth place qualifying, it's David Bronnefark from Sweden. Maybe position five, but a couple too many mistakes in that first semi-final. You got the pace, but you got to keep it on the road, haven't you? Yeah, I mean the, the car was really difficult to drive there. Um, I mean today it was completely new day for everyone with the clay compounds coming into play and everything. And we've had to adjust the car a little bit now for the main. And uh, you know, in the semi, I was kind of just trying to hold on, not to make too many mistakes, and and try to get as be good of a starting position as possible. And you know, I was uh, kind of worried I would be further down the field, so I'm I'm still pretty pleased with fifth, considering how the semi. I went so looking forward to the main. Great stuff, and if qualifying in fourth from Great Britain, Elliot Boots. <laughs> Elliot, uh, best qualifying for a while. Are you kind of just waiting there to pick up the pieces of Ongara and Kanas? 
Yeah, I mean, it's a World's A final, one hour long, anything can happen. We showed that here before. So I think we're in good spots, good starting spot to be in contention if something happens or, you know, and uh, push off from the start and try and hang with them as much as I can and, you know, uh, we'll go for glory. We'll see what happens. In third place, representing Turkey, Berkan Kilic. This is the Kilic's against the world. Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> yeah. Starting P3, my brother P6. I'm so happy. Race off, qualifying second, the reigning world champion, Davide Ongaro from Italy. So, the three peat, three times in a row, can you do it? We see, I don't know, one, one hour is super long here. Uh, we make a gamble on the tire, t tire toys and yeah, we see, one hour is super long. Everyone is fast in the final, so let's let's race and see what happens. Great stuff, thank you, video. And on pole, Juan Carlos Canas from Spain. Juan Carlos, it's been a well, a perfect few days so far. You just need one hour more of perfection. Yeah, we will see long final, the 15 most fastest guys of the world and yes we will try of course our best but yeah, I will try my best of course best of luck thank you I've been waiting for this for two years <laughs> I'm excited I want to be standing up but I can't nervous and excited all there right we go Kanas walking out to take up the number one starting position for the 2024 IFMAR 1-8 Nitro Buggy World Championship here in Redavan in Spain Half an hour from Alicante. Weather slightly ticked up, probably about 27 degrees centigrade, which is about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Cars go down. Let's get ready to boogity, boogity, boogity. And they're away. And it looks like a reasonably clean start. All right. Ooh, what a very good start. a very clean start. So, I think Burak got involved with something at the back there. I think maybe only have lost one place. But can ask the way begin with and behind him is Ongar and spinning out was third place Burke and Kilic. So Kilic has dropped back I think that means that Boots now is in third as they go for the first time around the Contramar Corners one hour final and we have Kanas from Ongaro and how many times have we said oh he's flamed Kilic already Kilic flamed already Kilic Burke and Kilic from three is out within one lap and that is a big story straight away and it looks like we might be right with our who's going to be the fastest Kilic obviously I'm sure trying to get the car going again Unfortunate it's all for gone wrong there for Birken. Right, so the lap one in the books, and it is uh, Juan Carlos Canas who leads from Davide Ongaro. Ongaro obviously knows that what he can't do is let Canas get away, and he's not even thinking about it. Third place, Elliot Boots. There's a kind of a small gap, and then you've got Figueredo, and there's a bigger gap uh, back to the rest of the field. Ron Falk is scored in fourth, uh, and you can see him a little bit further back, yep. And then you've got fifth place, Figueredo, sixth. Burak Kilic, Marcus Kerr up seven, Bruno Quell up three places to eight, Fend up two, te oh. three places to ten. Little so good start for both uh, Coelho and for Fend, who are starting further back than they want to. Little bobble there by Kanas. Uh, I'm sure he's a little bit nervous. He's got Angara right behind him, and Boots is there as well. Ranafalk about two metres back. Yeah, in fairness, I, don't think, I, mean, I didn't get any impression he was nervous, to be honest. I mean, he I don't seemed think he incredibly is. relaxed. This entire time, it's all kind of shrug of shoulders, 50-50 and that sort of stuff. He's a very cool character. But now, oh, it's oh, over. Oh. So that's the first blink we've seen. And it was Kanas, which is a massive surprise. He gets then tagged by the blue and white car. I'm assuming that's uh, Birkham. I'm not sure if anyone else is Birkham. It's Marcus Kerr blue oh. as well. Right, a grip roll. Grip, grip roll. roll through the first. Don't forget, they've got a lot more grip at this point than they're going to have in the rest, of the, the rest of the race. And out they go now. So, Davide Ongaro leads, and it's going to be a case of where Canas is. I don't know how Canas... I think Canas may have dropped to fourth. He's in but Ongaro leads. And in second place, just behind him, it's Elliot Boots. So, Ongaro will come and cross the lap, and then we'll find out exactly how they are, the lay of the land, at the end of the second lap, but it's the first blink we've seen. It was a grip roll for Kanas. Over the line goes on Garo. Second place is Elliot Boots. And they take a long, long gap to third. And it's Kanas who's gone to third. He's got past Ron Falk after that. Yes, so Kanas making that mistake, just having a little bit too more grip. As you see, Angaro maneuvering his way through this one. It's a little bit squirrely coming under there. Boots needs to just latch one. Don't let him get too far away because Angaro will walk away with this. Well, will he walk away with it? Because we were thinking Kanas to walk away with it. Boots, Boots has had that kind of pace to be able to stay there uh, relatively effectively. Boots is in the lower picture, Kana um, and uh, 
Ongara is in the top picture. Well, we, maybe what we might see is a little bit of tire conservation, conservation coming on. We do know how abrasive this track is. Maybe these guys are just going to go slow, wait for a the second half or the third, fourth, third quarter of the race to make their moves. All right, so first from second, the gap now out to one and a half seconds. So we're not quite getting him in the same shot. How is Kanas coming back? That time round, Kanas did 48.4, which was one tenth faster than Boots, but four tenths slower than Ongara. So Ongara immediately staking a claim for a third consecutive world championship, but it is early days. We're four minutes into an hour, and there is Kanas, as you can see, climbing the hill. So the insert is Kanas, and the main picture is Ongaro. Kanas had a little screwy turn there, double turning at the bottom of the, uh, uh, the roller coaster. He's got it all to do. Now, he can do it, but it's all going to be in the brain. What can I do? Can I relax? And the lead at the moment, I say it's 5.239 seconds for Davide Ongaro. Yes, these two have been battling it up for, for the last two years against each other. They know how to race each other. Kanas gets in front of Boots. Now no, that's Ronald Falk. Sorry, that's Ronald Falk. So he needs to get in front of Boots and put on the afterburners and try to chase him down. Plenty of time left. Well, is there? Because we just in a 47.7 for Ongaro, wow. which is a second faster than Boots and half a second faster than Kanas. So the man with the afterburners at the moment is the Italian reigning world champion, Davide Ongaro, released by that grip roll for Kanas on lap two. Things are playing into his hand, but again, we, we say this, that, and the other. Don't forget, there's so much gonna happen in 55 minutes. They're gonna, each gonna make probably, well, I'm trying to think now, seven pit stops they're running seven and a half minutes. But more importantly, the grip they've got now is not the grip they're gonna have in 45 minutes. Absolutely, and we all know that this gentleman right out front here, the Italian, the two-time and current world champion, can do miraculous things on ball tires. And now the battle is uh, hotting up between Canas and Ronnefalk. As we see. And there we are on the main camera now. We're carrying on looking in the, in the inset camera at uh, Ongaro. So Ongaro, I'm sorry, Canas and Ronnefalk need to work together to push forward. They need to get in front of Boots. Boots needs to push a little bit. Maybe Boots is just hurling off for that second quarter. We've seen Boots uh, kind of has been mixture. He can lead it right from the get-go. He can come through midway through the race. We shall see as a Kanas makes a small bobble. He has a rearview mirror, mirror full of that yellow and green X-ray of the Viking. Yeah, can, uh, Ronald kind of. Uh, did, I'm not sure whether he got part. Whether he, when Kanas rolled, he actually did get back in front of Ronald Falk. Ronald Falk himself had a minor error and then went back behind him in that second lap instant. But they are together. And the interesting thing is. But Kanas is not leaving Ronnefalk. So no. Kanas not leaving Ronnefalk. Very interesting indeed on this front. So we did see Davide have a slightly slower lap of 50.5 just now. No, there's a second, a second error. If you're staring in the inset, you've seen it. We're staring at this battle for second and third. The lead goes down to 1.17 seconds. Boots is doing absolutely the right thing. Yeah, Boots absolutely. is running at the pace he can run at. He's not pushing it, and he's waiting to see what happens. You can't wait to see what happens in a 10-minute qualifier, but you can wait to see what happens in an hour-long final with tyre wear issues. But yeah. now the distance between first and third is four and a half seconds, and these two are right together in third and fourth. It's Kanas on the one, and it's Ronnefelk on the four. Boots, Five, sorry. Boots just conserving his tyres a little bit while these guys are pushing hard. Davide trying to push hard. Uh, in fifth is Borak Kilik and Mason Fuller from ninth all the way to sixth. Mm -hmm. Lots of concentration on the rostrum. Getting close to pit stop time, probably next lap, maybe the lap after, as we're at six and a half minutes. You can see on the track where Ongaro is, he's just going down the roller coaster now, and a little bit of, a little bit of air now, a little tiny bit extra breathing space between Kanas and Ronald Falker. Don't forget, in between these two pictures, having a lovely time on his own is Elliot Boots with his S-Works. So Boots absolutely in this one, because he's still only 1.6 seconds off the lead. And that's a good... Good gap between him. Not enough that Congaro can be comfortable, but enough where if he does make another little bubble, Elliot will be there to capitalize. While we see Kanas just slightly pulling away from David as he makes his way up over the downhill double. Uh, Kanas has picked up a little bit of pace on both the uh, second and the fourth place men. I think we go across the line now. Oh, but that mistake, but I want to the background. That's a minor one. Ongaro turns round a 47.7 and comes in for his fuel stop. Uh, 48.3 from Boots, 48 flat from Kanas. 48, yeah, it was a bobble. It's 48.5 from. Uh, Ronald Falk, so look at that, he's come out of the pits right behind, so that's first and second, but Kanas has not done a pit stop. And Kanas, uh, uh, Angaro having a little bit of bubble as they made it down the roller coaster. Kanas, we think, will come in, pretty sure that he'll come in this time, uh, and then Angaro will take back over that lead. Elliot Boots now 2.2 
back of Kanas has not come in for fuel. We expect him to come in as well. Yeah, he should come at the end of this lap. I mean, in fairness, it wasn't an issue as far as pit stops are concerned for Ongaro. He came in at seven and a half minutes. He's not going to have to run short. Now, the only question is, is Kanas going to be able to eliminate a stop? He's running a lap longer at the moment, and yeah, he comes in. So on it goes with Ongaro. And we see Boots in as well. And out. That was so Boots was leading. He isn't anymore, because that's the man who's leading in the picture. You can see Boots in the background. I think the lead's gone up slightly from the uh, couple of seconds it was coming in. So on go everyone stopped once. My maths doesn't tell me whether that uh, will save a pit stop for uh, Kanaf. I don't think it will. And they continue going round now, not even 10 minutes in. Ongaro certainly isn't third. Ongaro is certainly in the lead because the other two pulled in a lap after than him for a stop. But last time, in 2022, he actually ended up making a lot more pit stops than anyone else. Well, he said he liked the little half empty. He liked the tank to be a little emptier because he liked the lighter car. Yeah. I wonder if that's going to come into effect this week. But he had a flying pit stop of five seconds where Boots had a 5.7. Now, the loser in that whole in that whole process appeared to be Ronafalk. He's lost a couple of seconds now off the back of a Canas. Has everyone stopped yet? No one's made 10 minutes. And I think some may have made nine. You make nine minutes, you save a stop. Um, but at this point, given the fact that at the end of his stop, he was already up to the backside of Juan Carlos Canas. Um, yeah. So anyway, so in the lead is this man, David Ongaro. Let's drop back to Boots, just a few seconds back, because he's 3.7 seconds back now. Here we go. That's, that's how long 3.7 seconds is. And he is going to be fighting quite soon with Juan Carlos Canas. What about just slightly dropping off seven seconds? People following Coelho. Coelho's 21 seconds back. Fend is 40 seconds back. So Fend's had some issues somewhere. Um, to fall that far behind. Boots probably going into conservative, conservative mode. Doesn't want to lose track. Doesn't want to be too far behind Ongaro. He wants to be there and is able to capitalize if anything goes wrong. But as you can see, that yellow wheel, not running the yellow wheels, his teammate, the Spaniard, JCC, is not too far back. He is just actually right there now. It's just the two C's at this event. Uh, so going down now to the Contramark corner. The gap between them last time around was timed at 1.4 seconds. They were within a hundredth of a second of an ultimate lap time. So not really seeing at this moment and at this moment of tyre diameter and tyre wear, we're not seeing the blistering pace we saw from Juan Carlos Canas in the semi-final. Now, when we spoke to him uh, during one of the breaks, he said that he knew the tyre he was having for the final and was testing the tyre for the semi. So it's likely he's probably got a harder tyre on or a slightly different grip just to get grip for longer into the race. Don't forget his tyres were bald after 40 minutes of the European Championship. And it's Canas in the background there. Ronafak now has, has caught back up to Canas, so this is interesting. Drop back again to the next two, because Canas and Ronafak are right together. Or right together-ish. There we are, they, they have come back together. So, the story of the first 11 minutes really is we're not quite seeing the pace we expect. It's not slow, but we're not really seeing the Canas pace we expected to see, which makes me think they've back-ended the setup. Oh, yes, or just preparing for the long haul. Well, that's back oh, end of the setup. <laughs> the back end of the race. <laughs> uh, Kanas now trying to get up and catch up to Elliot. Elliot is going to be 4.3 back, so mm. uh, a few one hundredths of yeah, a second. Yeah, made a mistake there during that second uh, chicane. He overshot it, lost himself some time. 48-1 uh, against 47-9, 47-8 uh, for both the first and second drivers with Kanas. Uh, who's that upside down? Oh, Ronald Falk's made a big mistake. So Ronald Falk's had an error, and that's going to take him right out of contention for a while. But they have such a big lead over fifth place, Burak Kilic. This top four is going to remain the top four, but Ronald Falk lost at least four seconds there. Now, can Kanas roll up to the back of Boots? We shall see, because he's going to have to do that and get by Boots. Well, I'm sure there's thought about can they use the pit stops to get by. They are very quick. There's Boots. And there's Canas in the background. The gap to the lead is four seconds. Uh, Boots was three tenths of a second faster than Ongara that time round. And uh, JCC was four tenths faster than that. So JCC actually gained seven tenths on Ongaro. Can't see him, but he gained on him. As Boots and the s works go around. That's Ongaro. That's Canas just behind Boots. As you can see, he's a little way back on the roller coaster over the rumble strips. Just, just not seeing them both together. Boots. Nice. We're almost at the 15-minute mark, 47.20. Boots in the white and red and white S-Works with white wheels and Canas right behind him. Another red vehicle rocking the yellow wheels this week. 
you really upset. You love a yellow wheel, don't you? I, well, I know his color scheme is white. Interesting. I'm, uh, I think it's, it's interesting. I, I just think they've run out of white wheels, but you, you think there's something more sinister about it. Yes. <laughs> Always. Okay, over the line, 48-1 for Ongaro, 47-9 for uh, Boots, and 48-1 for Kanas. Boots is slowly chipping away at that lead, and now it's not to 3.8 seconds. It is. In this second phase, Boots seems to have it. He's dragging Kanas with him. Uh, where is... Oh, uh, Ronafax having an absolute nightmare period oh, Boots here. Boots makes a mistake. That's going to allow Kanas to go by as Boots makes a mistake. His first mistake. Oh, oh and his oh, second mistake. Right, so now we're oh. back to who we thought we were going. It took a while... So it took 11 minutes before, sorry, 14 minutes before we saw an error from Boots. Unfortunately, it's quite a serious one. He's dropped back several seconds. At the same time as Ronafalk's dropped back several seconds, he's moved into fifth. So it's now all about Kanas and Ongaro. The gap was 5.1 seconds last time round. This time it is uh, 4.6. So Kanas has got the speed at the moment. Ongaro being caught up. Boots it back another three seconds after a 51. A 48 for Burak is moving fast, and Ronafax made a mistake. I think, uh, I think Ongaro made a mistake because he is now in the sights of Kanas. Yeah, so Ongaro, a little roller there. And what was a very comfortable lead in the first eight minutes is now a lot less comfortable. He'll be coming in for a pit stop either this lap or the next one. I think the next one, to be honest, that'll be a 15 minute stop. And the Spanish crowd excited by the fact that their hero is much, much closer to the Italian double world champion. As we see Canas making his way through the screen, up and up, the double downhill jump. He, can, is, some, he can see him, and he's going to go after him. Canas chasing down Ongaro. Now, is Ongaro actually in the peripheral vision of Canas now is the question. Ongaro's coming for fuel, so Canas takes over the lead. He'll be in the next lap. Can he click out a fast lap? And uh, gain some time on the pit stops. Well, interesting. Uh, uh, Ongaro lost two seconds that in lap. Mason Fuller runs into fifth place. Ronafax having an absolute nightmare. That was gone wrong. He's dropping down to sixth. So something's gone wrong. In, well, he's, he's put, looking for fuel, but he's also having some issues. But Kanas oh. now looking a little bit better. So Kanas, let's see what he can do in his pit. Now he, he ran one lap longer in his uh, first stop. Now is he going to run one lap longer again, which means he won't stop this time. He'll stop next time. Ongaro in the... Uh, that's Kanas and Ongaro. Ongaro in the inset. So is Kanas coming in here. So Kanas just got himself off sequence more than anything else. Comes down. Ongaro, I think, has gone into the lead. Oh, yep. Ooh, Ooh, that was it's close. Long that was up. close. Uh, second longer than it should have been, perhaps 6.0 against 5.8 against 5.5. Elliot Boots actually scored as a leader, but he stopped as well that time. So, interesting to see where they are. My feeling is that the lead, let's just give you an idea, as, right, leaving the rumble strip then was on Garo, and leaving it now is um, Kanas. So that's about four seconds, I'd say, three and a half, four seconds, as they battle... With Kanas in the battle cam, well, sorry, with Ongaro in the battle cam. Kanas on the main picture at the moment. Uh, Fuller has got past Ronafak. I'm not quite sure what's happened to Burak Kilic. Burak Kilic had a bit of a nightmare as well. Kilic was up to, Burak was up to fifth. Birkin's out the race, not bothering. Fenn's not doing too well. Um, yeah, that's really interesting. That the, the kind of the, the challenge is sort of falling apart, apart from the top three. Now Mason Fuller now in an absolutely scored fourth place. We're on pace. He's on fourth completely on merit because of the fact that other people are going slow and making mistakes. It's nine seconds ever Ronnie Falk lefty. Oh yeah, the Iceman. Cool is the other side of the pillow. <laughs> but right now, we're looking at Longa um, Kanas who just gets it up on the carbine and now has to go a little bit slower. He was 3.1, just uh, 3.2 seconds back of Ongaro last lap. Let's see what it is when he comes I think it's a little bit more, but even without that, Ongaro look, has looked quite quick, actually. That was a 47.8 by Ongaro last time, by. Yeah, I think it's been another 47 this time around. He's gone beep already for going across. He's gone across in a 47.5. Uh, Kanas now, <laughs> Kanas turned two wheels and did a 47.7. Yeah, that little bobble cost a two tenths. Two tenths. Or perhaps more, perhaps he's gone faster. So Kanas now, I suppose all of them are sitting there going, right, we're 18 minutes. We're not even into a, in a third of the way into this one. What can we do? Boots isn't that far behind still, just three seconds back. Mason Fuller uh, is back a bit further. He's back another um, 16 seconds in fourth. Four seconds ahead of Ronafalk. Bert on a further two back and Figueredo in seventh. Coelho hasn't figured at all in this race and he's in eighth. Uh, Robert Battle in ninth. Kerop in tenth. Nope, Kerop now in ninth and Battle's in tenth. Uh, and Fend, I don't know what happened to Fend. He had some issues. 
He dropped 40 seconds back, and now I've looked back at him 10 minutes. He's only lost four seconds in those 10 minutes. So I don't know whether he's been actually flamed at some point. I have no idea. But he's about to go a lap down to Ongaro as he comes out of the pits. 6.5 seconds. You'll see him any second now. He'll be in front of this man. behind him, actually. That is, that is Fender lap down. As and that is Kanas running 3.8 seconds behind. Kanas makes his way through the rollers. That is Fenn behind him, but Fenn is now a lap down. Uh, Mason Fuller trying to make some inroads here, but he's about 8.6 seconds back and forth. And let's see what Kanas can do as the last time he came by is 3.8 seconds back of Bongaro. Kanas needs to start picking up the pace, I'd say. 41 minutes and 22 seconds left to go in this race. Lots of time. Yeah, there is lots of time, but I noticed that the, uh, in the background, Boots isn't giving up. Um, just dropped off a little time there. 47.5 against 47.7, 47.9, 47.6 for Mason Fuller. His fastest that all. Mason really going well in this one. Uh, he's, you know, he's only one problem for somebody else away from podiuming. Podiuming? Podiuming in the, uh, the world. Let's uh, see if we can have a look at, uh, at uh, Boots for a second. We can ask for a while now. Let's just drop back to Boots as the main camera. There's that's not Boots, that's one more. That's Fenn. There we go, there's Boots. In between them is Fenn. Uh, waiting for them to... to yeah, apart from those, those, that, one, that one lap which uh, Boots had, which had an error and a half in it, it's been a great performance over the first third of the race, and we are just about a third down for Elliot. Looking third place and making it two of the top three, being S-Works. That time round, can ask four tenths faster than Ongaro. And it boots about the same speed as Ongaro. The top three really have broken away now with uh, Mason Fuller in a good fourth place, but 17 seconds behind them. Uh, Kanas made up three tenths of a second that lap by and is now 3.7 back of Ongaro. Uh, he had a 47.6 to Ongaro's 48 flat. So Ongaro having a few bobbles. I mean, maybe a few bobbles, a little touch of the pipe here and there. That's cost them maybe a little spin up. Yeah, now on the 39 minute mark, 39.50 left to go. So flying quite easily. The next lap gets completed in the 47.9 by Ongaro. Can I say it always seems a little bit quicker? Oh, no, well, uh, uh, call me a liar, 48.3. But towards the end of each fuel run, he looks a little bit faster in my mind. Across there, 48.0. So the top three, the slowest of the top three there was uh, Canas, but there's no real difference at the moment, and they're right in a settled poem. This is going to be decided on what happens when the tyres aren't gripping anymore. I, I believe so. I mean, <laughs> history has told us who's really good at that. Well, it certainly has. Ron Fount is sort of in no man's land, half a minute back in fifth. Coelho has actually climbed to sixth now, so he's been to climb through the field. There he is, that's Ron Fount in the fifth position. Not it was only a bit of a scrap earlier with uh, Coelho, but he's kind of left Coelho at the moment. Yeah, Ranafo's car is looking a little bit difficult to rotate at the moment. Through those 180s. Boots was the slowest there. 48, ah, oh, 47.3 from Juan Carlos Canas. He gained a, well, 47.4, gained a tenth actually from uh, uh, Ongaro, but it was a 48.4 from Boots that time round. So Boots lost some time. Ronald Falk makes his way up over the paver jump across the start finish line. Let's see what type of lap that was for the Viking. That was a 49.2. So David needs to get down into those 47s. Consistent 47s. He's going to some inroads. 38 minutes and 15 seconds left to go in this one hour final. So nowhere near halfway yet as uh, Burak Kilic stops the fuel. Um, yeah, 22 and a half minutes, about right. Ronald Falk trying to come back from a we well, had a weird situation a few minutes in. Minutes and now we can see in the insert, that's your leader. Davide Ongaro. Davide looks like he just has no cure in the world as he makes his way through the rollers. He's done that a few times. And down the hill he goes to the Contramar corner. Car looking solid, looking very grippy. Well, he's, right, he's running the same pace as Kanas. Give or take a tenth either way for both of them on individual laps. They're slightly, and I use the word slightly, dropping Boots now. He's nine seconds off the lead, almost ten. Uh, and that's it. That's the three who are really in this at the moment. As into, I assume, into the pits will come. Uh, yep, into the pits comes on Garo. So the lead will swap 
And it goes in back. Oh, you get to help, wait for a while because two more cars are coming in. So a little bit of a delay that time around, 5.724 seconds. So not too much of a delay, but a bit of a delay. And now he's out and running. Now, so he'll be in second at the moment. He's behind Canas, who is uh, right also there. about to come in for fuel, just ahead of him there. Oh, he's right. Oh, that's Fend. He's fallen over Fend. Oh, dear. That's cost him a second as he fell over Fend. I'm saying it's Fend. I think it is, just by colour scheme. So the referee is going to be uh, asking for that to get changed. Not get changed, but uh, you know, in let through. Actually, he's in Fend. Who is that? that? Is Canass. It's Canass. He fell over. Okay, that's even, that's even more interesting. So he fell over Canass. It's interesting, when the sun shines, it bleaches... Oh, 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 oh! oh, oh. Canass is out! Canass is out! Canass is out! Canass has flamed! Canass has flamed! The, the, the ultra-favourite for this championship has flamed! The hearts of Spain are dying round us! He did get over the timing and scoring. It's a minimal problem because he gets going again. He just loses the flaming time. He needed to come in. He needed to fuel. Canass, the favourite, he has flamed out! And he's not rejoined! He's not rejoined. There he is now. Oh, no. The cruelty of 1-8 Nitro oh. Racing. It's not as bad as it could be. He would got the lap prior to that. He had to fuel anyway. As disasters go, this is a smaller disaster. But the fact that he was struggling to make up a few seconds, he's now going to have to make up a lot more. Let's see how far behind he is. Oh, and he's got, he's got to get his brain in gear. He's got to get his brain in gear. He must have thought, I've got a 50-50 chance of the World Championship. And now it's gone back to 90-10 at best. Where has he dropped? I think he's going to still be ahead of Mason Fuller. I think he's still ahead of Mason Fuller because... Oh, oh, oh. oh he's got some problems. He's still ahead of Mason Fuller because it was just such a gap. But he's now dropping down. It's already 10 seconds. And he comes across the line, and how much? He's got to make up 24 seconds. Now, in fairness, he was four seconds behind. So that flame cost him 20 seconds. But 20 seconds here is a lifetime. It's not impossible. There's 35 oh, no. minutes to go. Uh, but the worry is, when your car flames once, it can flame again, and that was his in lap. That was his in lap. Well, something uh, looks like Mason Fuller had a long lap, a 107, maybe he flamed out in his pit, or flamed out somewhere. So that's going to take him out of a top five. Uh, move Bruno Coelho up to five. It's Ongaro, Boots, Canas, Ranafal, Coelho, Figueredo, Killick, Fuller, Badier, Carap, Fenn, Berton, and Killick out. Yeah, we seem to really, Berton's kind of gone, Killick, uh, Burke and Killick have gone, Ricardo Berton and Dakota Fenn are kind of a bit lost. Carap's down a lap, Robert Battle's down a lap, but anyone else, including Fuller, Burak, Killick, Figueredo, we've just seen what happened there. Canas, with a flame, managed to lose, if he'd flamed, something like, 20 yards further back, 20 metres further, he wouldn't have crossed the line. Mm -hmm. And that he lost the lap and he'd been out. But it's still possible. It's difficult. We've seen one miracle this week, this today. Why can't we see another one? We can see, but right now, the ball is in the court of Davide Angaro. Is this going to be his the three-peat? Something we've never mm -hmm. seen in history. Yeah, it's looking like it. And we got, so we've got Boots in the insert in second place. We've got Canas on the comeback trail. It's really literally throw caution to the wind now for one car. Canas, forget about tyre conservation. Doesn't really matter. Just lay down your fastest lap you could possibly do every single lap. Coelho and um, uh, Ronnefuck are very close at the moment in uh, a battle for fourth and fifth, uh, but they're both half a minute off the line. It's actually, actually that far behind Canas, of course, because of his problems. And, oh dear, the cruelty. But cruelty can strike more than one driver. Absolutely, absolutely. But uh, Canas, who's had a pretty much perfect, perfect year. Perfect, perfect weekend. Perfect weekend. Uh, losing, flaming out. Probably just came a little bit short on fuel last time around. We don't well, know. I've got more bad news for him. Uh, David Ongar is just on a 47.1. And Davide is just getting faster. So, Ongaro with the Matrix tyres, which uh, we know are large diameter. Uh, no idea that's good or bad at the end of the day. But Canas, it's really about a mental game now. You've got to get, you've got to stop thinking about what might have been and start thinking what could be. He's still got a chance of getting up to uh, Boots. 15 seconds ahead of him. And if he gets up to Boots, perhaps he can get up to uh, Ongaro. He gained a second on Boots that time. Ronnefalk's back on the pace again after being off the pace for a, for some reason, for about five, about seven or eight minutes in the middle. Now, interestingly, we've just seen a bad lap for Ronnefalk, and Coelho moves into fourth place. Figueredo moves into sixth. Burak Kilic into seventh. Let's see if we can have a look at the uh, uh, Bruno Coelho, the bright orange car. 
because he's moving through. It's taking him a long time to get up to sort of fourth place. The orange and white machines currently uh, halfway around the lap. Kamas feverishly trying to catch up and get some time. That whole tire strategy is going out the door now. He doesn't have to worry about that as we are on board with the multi-time world champion Bruno Coelho. Bruno finding some pace here into the almost going into the second half of this race. 31.50 left to go in this race. It's Angaro from Boots, Canas, Coelho, Ronafok, your top five, Figueredo in six, Kulik, Fuller, Badier, Carrot, Burton, and Fenn. Fenn looking out. I think Fenn is retired. He doesn't show the blue line of going. Well, he's had a flame out. So this might be the end for Fenn. His challenge, his time here at the World Championship might be in an end. But we know this man can do it. He has multiple championships. Can he throw down some fast laps and catch up to some of these guys? We're sitting here, and if you if you were looking at this on a normal race meeting, you go, well, you know, there's a possibility Boots might make it. It's unlikely anywhere else is going to make it at Ongaro. But we're sitting here with this sort of Damocles of tie wear over our heads, and we've no idea, and they're one minute and 12 seconds away from them having no idea about how the tyres are going to last. The longest they've run is 30, 30 minutes. minutes. They're, they're going into a voyage of unknown. They themselves admit they might have an issue uh, towards them. Looking at Kanas in the insert, we're looking at Coelho behind him. The gap between the two of them is five seconds in the battle of fourth. And you see in the background there of the Coelho shot, the main shot was uh, David Ronafout, who's in fifth. So you're one, two, three, four, five. It's pretty much who you probably thought it would be, but the gaps are different and the order's different how you would have expected. Yes, so, but right now, whoa, as Coelho just gets a little bit sideways as he comes off that drop off, Coelho kicking off some decent laps. Uh, but Boots just threw down a 47.5. Yeah. I'm going to 47.4, though, so. 49.4 for Canas that wow. time round. And a 47.56 for Coelho. This time a 48.2. I'm not quite sure. Canas doesn't quite appear as he goes up past start finish to have the pace at the moment, to be honest. Uh, I'm wondering whether that's going to begin to come down a little bit. In fact, Coelho comes in for fuel. Uh, and there's that. Yeah, it's half an hour. He's exactly halfway through. That's the fuel run for him. Out he comes. So the Portuguese, multiple world and European champion. European champion in this discipline, world champion in several other disciplines. You just can't give an advantage like this to Davide Angaro. He will go, he will run away with it. Angaro has made his fuel stop. It's all gone well. Came out in 5.3 seconds. Now, Canas, who we're watching here in third, it's interesting to know what's going to happen to him. We've got Pequello in the insert. Canas from here. Is he going to risk it? Now, this is, this is not one lap too early. If he goes, because he obviously had to refuel. So next lap is e equal number of laps given the refueling. But you never know whether he flamed. Just the low tank pressure was an issue. Ronald Falk takes fourth as he's uh, off sequence with Canas. Uh, sorry, off sequence with Coelho. Coelho goes across the line and Ronald Falk stops. So Coelho moves back into fourth place. So it'll be interesting to see what happens when Canas comes out. Last time around 48 flat. Yeah, they're, they're easing back a little bit on pace. I wonder whether they're already feeling the tyre wear. Because yeah, the cars are light at this point prior to going in, but they're just easing back. We're not seeing the uh, not seeing the Fast 47. Also, the wind's got up, so that's going to make things more complicated as it gets windier and windier and windier. Boots slowly drifting off the back of Ongaro. Now, are we going to see Kanas coming? Yeah, he's got a bit safe now. They've taken a lap off his time per session. It's fine. Off he goes. And out he runs. Now, where is he in relation to Bruno Coelho? Seems to be about no one in the background, so he's got a read. He was 12 seconds ahead, and he's uh, he's looking okay. So we've got some situation now where it's uh, Figueiredo's got a problem. I don't know what it is, but Figueiredo just lost a bit of time. Mason Fuller's about to come in the pits as well. So just to remind you, it's the nine car of Mason Fuller in and out. Oh, oh, no, that didn't work. Got stuck in the, uh, the grating, and there is Canas. Let's see, let's uh, have a little look at our leader, Davide Ongaro. Currently, he is uh, obviously about uh, half, like two thirds of a lap ahead of uh, this mouth. He's probably some of the rumble strips or something at the moment. So Ongaro uh, has a lead of 19 seconds over Elliot Boots. Juan Carlos Canas is third. Coelho not quite up to Boots' speed. There's Kanas, and there is our leader in the insert. Really, things are going the way of the Italian. 
Absolutely. Uh, Ongaro has one hand on the trophy at the moment. Oh, that's a very brave Ooh. thing to say. It's that's a very brave thing to say. I, I mean, a betting man wouldn't bet against that right now. As we are on board with car number two of Ongaro in the Associated with the Matrix tires. And he is looking like he's just out there on a Saturday afternoon drive. At the well, moment. that's what it is when you're leading the uh, World Championship final for well, at least the third time. I don't think he led one before he won it in Australia. Uh, and it's just looking quite simple. It's uh, 27 minutes to go, so there's still plenty of action. We, we kind of think the major incident was that flame for one Carlos Canas. But Ongaro, once again showing why he should never be underestimated. Let's not forget, he had a huge problem from the Euros himself with engine problems. He did. And we are now running for an hour. So, it's, you know, it doesn't just happen to one or the other. He's, he's coming up behind... Is that Fuller or Kilic? That's Kilic he came up behind. Burak Kilic. Um, really bad news for the Kilic, but the Birkin Kilic made it as far as the bottom of the roller coaster on the first lap. Took a tumble and broke something. So his world final was over in, what, 26 seconds, 25 seconds. It's really bad luck after all that work of the week. In fairness, the Kiliches have had a really rotten run of luck over the past few races. It's not been their week. Well, and they've not been their year for actually, they've been very, very quick, but for success, it's not been their year. But the pace is there, and if the pace is there, your luck will turn. Ongaro crosses the line, and that was a 48 1. Let's see what uh, it's a long, long gap back to Boots. He's currently in second in the World Championship. I think that Ongaro's put enough space between each other that he could do a tyre change if he Well, he's to. 20 seconds. He's about 30 seconds of tyre change. He's 30 seconds ahead of Elliot. But he's 20 seconds ahead of Elliot. It's about 30 seconds, I think, for a tyre change. Um, Elliot is 11 seconds ahead of Canas. Canas is 7 seconds ahead of Coelho. <coughs> and uh, Ronald Falk is 2 seconds behind. Uh, so we can see Boots now in the insert. It's called Battle Cam, but there haven't been any battles. It's been about turning laps. It's been about, really, I think it's fair to say, Lefty, that the battle this weekend has not been with each other, but with the track. Yeah, unfortunately. Uh, as of now, 25 minutes left to go. We haven't seen the hoped-for battle that we wanted. <sighs> what could have been? Well, I wouldn't start riding off yet because with three minutes to go, the last chance to qualify, Una Hatner was qualifying by Miles and Spencer Rifkin. Absolutely. And it all turns around on a sixpence, and that's what happens when you get sport like that. But Angaro is still going fast. He's not backing off. He's now got a 23-second lead over Boots. Canas is 9.2 seconds back, but what he needs is some intervention from the RC guards <laughs> if he wants yeah. to become a world champion. They are turning laps effectively at the moment, and it's what happens in an hour-long final. It can't always be scrapped. At some point, you've just got to turn some laps. Dropping down through the Montremar cor corner for the first time. First time? For the latest time. Uh, Elliot Boots, yes, works driver with a Reds engine. Don't forget, he won the European Championship at this track. He was driving for Kyosha at the time, but he won at this track in 2016 after a really crazy set of circumstances. But I think both, uh, certainly where Robert, where... David and Robert. Both David and Robert Robert. both had servo failures, yeah. But you've got to be in it to win it. And do you know what he is? He's in it. He is. And he could win it. It is not over to the... Boots to the fat guy sing. And he's not really been closed down dramatically fast by... Like Anas. Though Ongaro's just turned the fastest lap of the race, a 47-1. 47-7 for Boots, 47-8 for Car Juan Carlos Canas, 48-3 for Bruno Coelho. So, into the unknown. They're going to the 40th minute, when everyone said the tyres would be balls. Are they going to be balls? Are they going to be throwing inserts? What's going to happen? No real, real battling. So I think Figueredo and Fuller are quite close on the track. So, Davide now 23.6 seconds up. His uh, last lap was a 48 flat. A slow, that's his slow oh, lap for him. not even trying. 48.6 was the time for Elliot Boots. Canas is eight seconds behind. And it's Boots, and then now he's moving on with Ongaro. This is Boots in second. Into the fuel comes Coelho. Probably it's going to be a fuel stop for Elliot this time round. All 
right, so Angaro comes in, and that is going to be a 5.416 pit for him. Five pits for Angaro. And Elliot should be coming in as well. No, Elliot was on. There's uh, Angaro out on the pits. Wow, Angaro is just on it. Over the rumble strip, dropping down, sweeping left, sweeping right. Boots comes out, uh, and again, he loses a second in the pit. He's 24. It's, it's, I think it is a slowly, slowly kind of gain there by Kanas. I mean, he's gained about three seconds in his last <laughs> seven minutes. He is obviously needing to be ahead of Boots to pick up any pieces that may happen from any issue that may or may not happen to Davide Ongaro. But we're sitting here watching another Italian masterclass. As Angaro's about to put Ranafog on a lap, it looks like. Yep, he's a Ranafog scored 45 seconds back, so he will go down the lap. There is Kanas finishing the laps. That's how far behind he is. And he hasn't actually gained anything on, in fact, he's lost two seconds since he came out from the refuel, uh, not refuel, from the, from the flame. So his left he pricked up his ears as a car skidded and revved its engine coming out of the uh, pit. Oh, 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 that's okay. Ronnefelt lets him through. And that must be quite depressing for David Ronnefelt. All through qualifying, he was there or thereabouts, half a second away. And now, well, he's not half a second away, is he? He's, he's a lap behind. And it was, something happened in the first... He was fine for the first five or six minutes. And he had a really bad period for five, six minutes, between like six minutes six and minute ten, and just suddenly dropped off the pace. It's Elliot, great. still on the pace. In fact, the fastest pit stop just been done by one car's Canas, by the way, 4.951. And I think we're going to start to see Canas begin to try and close down Elliot Boots. The gap's now down to six seconds, the two S-Works drivers. And being in second is, is your first person there to pick up the pieces. Gonna be, oh, good, uh, uh, that's Breton letting our uh, boots by. Mm. It's all about being in position in case anything happens. Yep. We are just coming up on the 20-minute mark, so we've oh, got two more pit stops to go. Mm, possibly three, depending on when they stop before. But yeah, it should be two more, it should get you back if you can stop in five minutes. So, <laughs> getting into the business end of this final, and the gaps are huge. 25 seconds on Gara to Boots, six seconds, Boots to Canas. Coelho's not out of a podium position yet. He's about nine seconds back. Everyone else has just found this just too difficult. Out comes Burak Kilic. So he goes a lap down to Boots. But we are still sitting there going, are oh, the tyres going to start causing an issue? But it seems they're not too bothered about running on the street. I don't think on this it's going to cause an issue at all for Angola. You know, having been out on that track walk during lunchtime, Mason Fuller, the surface is like, is like you know, solid sort of, Concrete tarmac. Do you need any? Do you need anything apart from a slick? I think the worry is more that they go that they go through the slick and end up on the, end up on some way on the uh, the insert. That'd be the worry, wouldn't it? A tire failure rather than a tire blowout. wear. <laughs> a blowout with, with absolutely no air pressure. A foam out. <laughs> so boots in second, doing the work, but and uh, Kanas has made some inroads on boots. He's now. No, he lost that two tenths. It's, it's, it's close. I mean, Boots can't afford to make a mistake. He'd have Kanas on him. But Kanas obviously trying to recover from that 25-second or 20-second penalty of the flame. One of the fastest recoveries from the flame. But in the World A final, the flame's a flame. And it's, you know, taking too much out. And there's Kanas. As you can see, that's the distance. Kanas coming down off the patio section through the Conchmark corner and two corners ahead. is Boots, and obviously a million corners ahead, is Ongaro. And that's racing all through. Boots uh, just there. He can't really go faster. He can't go. He just needs to try to hold on for a second now if it stays like this. 18 minutes left to go in this race. Uh, Ongaro is just kind of walking away with it at the moment. At the moment. Mm -hmm. But at the moment, it's not the end. But Ongaro finding his major rival hamstrung by a technical issue. And it's the kind of thing you, you don't dream of, but you'll certainly take. 
Well, oh, we won an exciting race, but I think Davide Angar and his Davide Angar wants a boring happy. race. Davide Angar wants the most boring race, which is what he's currently having, which is turns lap, no one challenges me, wins the World Championship. That's what he wants, and he collects his bonus money from everybody. That is what Davide wants. And he wants to become a three-time World Champion. And there is Kanas, who is about to come by the loop. Let's see what he does when he comes by. That was a 47.7 for Kanas. a 47.9 for Boots, so it's a very slow game between the two of them. That's Boots, you can see. So what we was hoping to get has not evolved yet, but we do have 17 minutes left. We have belief. We have belief it will happen. We have belief. I believe. <laughs> I believe I can fly. Um, so these guys can fly. The wind's dropped down, by the way. The temperature's still up, but the wind's dropped down, which is making it a bit easier, I think, for everybody. Kanas proudly showing the number one for being top qualified, but unfortunately he's actually in third. As he goes over to complete another lap. Last time round, 48-1 for Ongaro, 48-2 for Boot. Oh, a bit of pace, a bit of turbo here from uh, Kanas. Gained a second on boot so the, uh, the battle for second is certainly on in the battle for second is certainly on if something goes wrong with the man in the insert it could be the battle for first as you can see down there in the lower left hand corner is your leader david angaro reigning world champion two-time world champion and i would say he's, he's been a world champion for six years and he's 16 minutes away from being world champion for another two years yeah he's got one hand and two fingers on that trophy. and it, once if it does happen it's going to ram up that ridiculous you know Anomaly, he's never been European champion. <laughs> I don't think you trade any of his world champions. Well, no, but it's just strange, isn't it? The things that have conspired against him and great drivers have prevented him from doing it. So it's on Garo and the insert. It's uh, Kanas in the main picture. That is not, that is the six car of uh, Burak Kilic. That is not Boots. Boots that time round was closed down by another eight tenths of a second. It's now 3.73 seconds. I think we are going to get a battle for second before the end of this one, Lefty. But a battle for first is in for fuel. Its penultimate stop is for Ongaro. It's still running, 15 minutes to go. If it carries on, still running. It's got one more stop, and the stop obviously is the most dangerous part of any uh, race for any type of racing car. That's where things can go wrong. That's where the randomest occurrences happen. Down towards the ball. Dakota Fenn's had some problems, dropped off four laps. Burns had a problem, dropped off three laps. Marcus Kerrott's had a problem, dropped off two laps. It's still top ten. And a number of challenges just haven't materialised. You come out of Thursday with the qualifying as it is, we've seen nothing really from... Oh, he's fourth. We've seen nothing from Quello. We've seen nothing from Ron Falk. No. Nope. All the guys we expected to be in the mix. Canas, we saw a lot of, but he got hamstrung. But even without... I reckon he lost 20 seconds of that flame. He's still 28 behind. Mm -hmm. Uh... And Boots has done a fantastic job of maturely driving really, really well. Um, it may not reward you. He may end up third, not second, if everyone keeps running. But Ongaro continues another lap. Continues going. And you can see him now as he rolls down the roller coaster. And up and round the rumble strip. There's another lap completed by Kanas. So, and you see how far behind it, it Kanas is. He's, you know, most of that's been completed by Ongaro. Mm -hmm. Kanas that time round, 48-2. Sorry, 49-8. Uh, he's been scored ahead of um, Boots because Boots went fueling. But that's a 49-8 for Kanas. That's a bad lap. Boots had a 12-second pit. No, Boots. Oh, wow. This is a change for second. Boots to the bad pit stop. This will be a change for second when uh, into the pits comes Kanas. So there's been a problem in the pit stops for Elliot Boots. Good spot there, lefty. That means that this guy in the insert, when he comes in, he's going to come back out again, and he will still be ahead of Boots, despite that he had a bad lap. But a bad lap of a second, it's not the same as a bad lap of nine seconds. So let's see where it's going to be. Actually, yeah, 102, yeah, he's at a 12. That's six seconds he's lost. They might, actually, they might come out quite close together. But let's see if uh, Kanas comes in this time. And in the insert below, you can see what Kanas is doing. And no, nope, he's going round for one more. So his lead over Boots, let's see what that is. It seems to be four seconds. So I think when he does stop for fuel, they're going to be absolutely right on top of each other. So we might have a battle, but for a second. battle for second looks looking like it. 12 minutes and 55 seconds left to go, and Angaro now has one and a half hands. He's half a minute ahead. He's half a minute ahead, and Kanas needs to stop. 
Yeah. Actually, Kanasi is at 53.9 there. Did we miss a stop for him? I think that might, that sounds like a stop. I didn't see him have an accident in the insert, so I think, that may, I think we may have missed a stop. Yeah, didn't count the stop, unfortunately, but that means he is four, generally four seconds, and that makes a lot more sense than some of the other things. Oh, bit of a squirrel situation there as he tries to complete the lap. And he goes over now on a 49.3, and Boots will follow him across on a 48.6. Yeah, so that it, Boots is four seconds behind. Uh, so unfortunately, the overtake took place with a, uh, a difficult pit stop. We really aren't getting the, uh, the passing action we expected in this main final. But that's how it is. It's all about, you know, races aren't all classics, but they all result in a world champion at the end of it. And there goes Ongaro, about to go down the roller coaster for the 59th time, leading by half a minute from Kanas, who has dropped off him by four or five seconds over the past couple of rotations. Boots is only four seconds behind um, Kanas. I wonder now he's dropped back behind, and he's quite... He's, 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 he's going to start trying to gain back up again. Going to try. I'm going to push it a bit harder. I'm going to try and get myself closer to um, Kinas. Last time round, yep, seven tenths faster. So I think Boots has perhaps got the hurry up for himself because he thinks well, I need to kind of get him back to second again. I have a question, Nick. Go for it. Has there ever been a back-to-back, to back, to back world champion in any other discipline? Oh yeah. Okay. Lots of them. Uh, Sebastian Loeb won the World Radio Championship seven no, no, times no, no, in a row. No, 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 in RC, sorry. Uh, yeah, Lamberto Calari. Oh, he won like ten. He won about six in a row, I think. He won eight or nine in total, but he won, he won several in a row, yeah. So, but Calari is the only other one. What's that about Calari? Ungaro about to try to take this trophy back to Italy. He has got ten minutes and 48 seconds left for the Italian. And the reigning world champion... With the ball on his court, one and a half hands on the trophy. But I've, we can always see the trophy going down the steps with him, but it could come right back up and go <laughs> in the hand of somebody else. Ganassi in second, despite that flame. But, you know, a long, long way behind. Without that flame, uh, ifs and buts and maybes, it would be in a very, very different situation. So, Garo. 10 minutes to go. Ongaro leads by half a minute. Boots is four seconds back from uh, Kanas. Coelho is seven seconds back from Elliott. And then it's uh, Ronnefalk, who's a lap down. And Royal Battle, he's got a CV. Only the top five, he's got six. He's going to be quite happy with that. Yeah. If he can hold it. Seventh, Mason Fuller, who was up in fourth earlier. He's dropped down to eighth, but top American. Figueredo is in ninth. And then the rest of them are several laps back for several reasons. Nine minutes to go. One more pit stop for Angara. One more pit stop for everybody. Let's see what happens. It's not over till it's over. 9.30 left to go. Angaro. The back-to-back. -back. Certainly it's not over till it's over, and that's a really important thing to remember. So Angaro looking to put that whole Euros behind him and get ready. He's probably been preparing this for two more years. I was talking to him earlier on. He says he's preparing to come to the USA to do some more racing in 2025 and I am excited about that. But this man right here, I, re I was looking back at 2016 and a pudgy Mugen pro circuit driver with a purple hat, with a flat bill hat. Did you ever, I never thought I would see him be a three, well, almost a two-time world champion. Three-time world champion. Could be. That's not he is a three-time world not, champion. He is, absolutely, but not, not in this club. That's premature, that's, that's not, that's not, very good point. Not, let's not prematurely crown him, because that could be an issue. So, actually, Ongaro in his very young career, if he wins this, will be a four-time champion. And across two disciplines. But he's won three of the, well, won three of the premier if, buts, and maybes. Boots and uh, Carlos Canas have really kind of just stuck themselves together, haven't they? Four seconds apart, and they're ebbing and flowing slightly. I'm not sure really. I mean, uh, Boots gained that time and then lost again. Gained a second, lost a second as the wind picks up. It really is now really just about Ongaro. It's whether Ongaro can turn around. I mean, you know, there is, there is. last stop. Eight minutes and four to go. I don't he know. must be coming in for a splash and dash. Or maybe he can go eight. I don't think I would, but he's got half a minute, so I would definitely come in for a splash and dash. I would not risk it. I mean, because he, he may need to run nine if he, if he crosses the line at a certain point. So, 
My guess is they've probably changed their fuel strategy now and they're going to have one more just to make absolutely sure with about a minute or two to go because he's got half minute lead. Ronafalk goes into the pits. It's, sorry, Battle goes into the pits. Uh, Kanas stopping as well. The stop for Ongara is 5.8. The stop for Kanas is 5.4. Boots is also in with a, ooh, a longer one. Oh, Boots, having, oh, Boots has got more. I think Boots is having some trouble at the pit stops. There's probably something slightly wrong with the car that's slowing it down during pit stops. Mm. Um, luckily, he's managed to pull quite a long way from uh, Quayla, who is coming towards him at one point. So... Over they go. So we are currently watching Ongaro, who got out to a lead in about the third or second lap, I would say, has pretty much led it. We did see mm -hmm. some uh, back and forth between Kanas and him. But unfortunately, a flame out has uh, robbed us of a battle that we was hoping to get between two of the fastest drivers. Uh, Ongaro looking to show why he should be the number one eight scale driver in the world right here in six and a half minutes. I'm sure he's going to shoot up to the top of the top 25. That, that top 25 is. There's no. It's, I understand why they do it, and they do it in a very good way, and it's done very scientifically, but it just. When he's down, when we've got the double world champion down in fourth, it makes no sense. And it's, you know, you turn around and go, oh, this, this driver, this driver. Yeah, but they haven't actually won anything. They've just done fourth and fifth in a lot of events, so. There is no other way of doing it, but uh, but in some ways you need to have, because it's very objective, you need to overlay a bit of subjectivity. Going, yeah, I know it's by points it says he should be there, but he's not. You know, if you look at tennis rankings and that sort of stuff, they have a little bit of kind of a, a push on them. So, Davide Angara, five minutes and 55 seconds. We assume he has to come in for a splash and dash. He has a 34 and a half second lead up on second. That should be no problem for him. But... Now, and Kanas is in that insert down below. Another lap in the books for Davide Ongaro. And he has come in for fuel again. So exactly what they decided to do. Top the thing up, splash and dash. Take no risk. That's uh, oh, Dakota Fence car is just sitting on the uh, the side there. So that's obviously uh, uh, resignation. Oh, there they were. oh but he's now a lap ahead of Coelho. So Coelho now is behind him and a lap down. So an extra stop just for safety, because he was so far ahead. That's quite fun, isn't it, we can do that? Yeah. And that stop was a 5.191. As they just said, right, yeah, we're not taking any risk whatsoever. Now, obviously, when we get to the end of this, they're gonna, we're going to have a chat with whoever wins. They're going to reward the trophy, but it will, of course, be subject to tech. So there will be a, a few minutes for it's official. Canas turning like the Canas, I mean, it's, you know, it's, he's sitting there going what might be, you know, in fairness, you know, he's further behind than that 20 second flame would have taken him. But then you don't know how he would have driven the rest of the race if he hadn't had that situation. Absolutely. You know, because there's a different, entirely different mentality. He has managed to break away from Boots in third. Coelho a bit further back in fourth. Um, then Ronafalk in fifth. And then it's got Rob Battle in sixth, Burak Kirch in seventh. But really, it's, you know, there's currently only three cars on the lead lap and it's a massive lap. Yep. Uh, Four so minutes, 18 seconds to go. So running in order is Angaro, Kanas, Boots, Coelho, Ronafok, your top five. Robert Batty in six. If he finishes there, he'd be happy with that. Borat Killick, Mason Fuller, the top American in eighth. Joao Figueredo making his first ever uh, final in ninth. Marcus Carrup, the young Dane in tenth. I think if he finishes tenth, that's a good finish for him. Ricardo Berton and it looks like Dakota Fan out on lap 61 and Barkan Killick not even completing a lap. Unfortunate, unfortunate for Barkan. Yeah, desperate bad luck. The Killick has really had nothing but bad luck, to be honest. So, um, But that's where it is. Cars moving out of the way for the Italian double world champion. In three and a half minutes, they could be asked to move away next year for the Italian triple world champion. It has been a masterclass aided by the fact that his major rivals, who we thought were his major rivals on pace during qualifying, Coelho and Ronnefelt just haven't been clean enough. That's simply the fact. They've just not been clean enough. And JCC, Juan Carlos Canas, so hard to tell. Without that flame, what would have happened? He was behind, but not by much, and he was sort of catching up. And now I know that his flame cost him 20 seconds. He's now 31 behind, but you don't know how he would have run the rest of the race if he uh, hadn't had that. Absolutely. I mean, for Angaro, this is great in the camp, and with two minutes and 50 seconds left to go, he now has just a thumb missing on that trophy. 
uh, I would say. Uh, unfortunately, as fans, we got robbed of a, a great race, but not unfortunate for this guy, because we're about to, if, if it stays like this, we're about to see history be made. Uh, this man, this young man has made history before by going back to back. He's about to, on possibly, the cusp, possibly, on the cusp <laughs> of a third. Now, it's interesting. Trophy. That Kana, Kana, I think Kanata had a safety fuel stop as well. Mm. Oh, no, that's his seventh stop. That's his seventh stop. Uh, yes, that was it. He just, he just ran a bit longer. So we had a, you know, he, he was able to run a bit longer. He didn't have a fuel stop in hand. He's got a little bit extra. It's such a favorite. Look, at Spash and Dash. Bet, fastest stop of the entire final there. 4.365 right at the end. I'm not sure how it's going to affect things with Boots, because Boots hasn't made a fight. has made his final stop. He's only six seconds behind prior to that. Now, is this going to... Can we get... Uh, let's see where Boots and Kanas are. They should be quite close, but, you know, you can't always tell. The, uh, the timings are difficult. I, I mean, if we look at our top five, besides Davide and Garo in front, it's pretty much been the same top five the entire week. Yeah. Angaro, yeah. Canas, Boots, Rana Yep. Yeah. So they've, they've been the ones who did it. Um, we also have Fenn qualified fifth overall, but then had the problem. I, you know, I think he's, got, he's had mechanical issues here, but you kind of wonder, without having to do the last chance qualifier, without the problems, it may have been a little bit different. So we need to get Canas and Boots onto the battle cam because they're right together in battling for second and third. One minute and 20 seconds left to go in this race. And we see... So where are Canas and Boots? Oh, no, he got, he got away with it. So Canas and Boots are right together. They're about seven tenths apart. Last time around, they're seven tenths apart. And they are currently just coming to the end of the lap. So they are Kanas now, and Boots, Boots has got past. Boots is moving to second place, Kanas is third by a long way. It's been a problem for Kanas, and Boots now takes second place. Let's get Boots on the insert camera. There he, no, we want cart number four. If that's four, can't see it, it looks like it's four, yep, that's Boots now. Boots has taken second, I don't know what happened to Kanas there. We've been over two laps to go, he's just suddenly dropped, he's had two Difficult lap. <laughs> he, I know he, he fueled, but that fuel stop shouldn't have taken him out of second place. The and fuel stop did take him out of second place, and now he's five seconds behind. Did he ever miss fuel? Anyway, mm -hmm. we'll find out in the post-race press conference what happened. Um, there's a big story. There's a, he's got a, there's a novel to be written. And we are four seconds from the end. It is Davide Angaro. Davide Angaro is going to become the three-time world champion. No. Three-time world champion, Ongaro, he's smiling away. He knows he's done it. He is the world champion. It is amazing. Oh, it's happened again. It's happened again. Well done, Davide. Congratulations. Davide, Ongaro, you're back to back. Back world champion. Three-time world champion. History has been made here at RC Redavon as Davide, Ongaro goes three times in a row. Three times in a row. There we see Vary coming up and giving him a big hug. All of Italy should be celebrating right now. I think we're going to have a day of recognition for this man's achievement. And he's only 22, 23 years old. And he is now a four-time champion, three-time champion, three-time champion in this discipline, one-time champion in... Uh, David Ungaro is about to receive from Eric Anderson the trophy that tells him he is a three-time back-to-back-to-back world champion receiving the accolades of his racers. Uh, fellow world champion, Salon de Graaf, congratulates him. Kilich brothers, Burak and Birkin. And I think he gets a chance to... Uh, do you want the tro trophy first? <laughs> All cars to technical inspection. All cars to technical inspection. Please. David A. Please. Oh, it was two All years ago. We said, congratulations, you're a double world champion. You're now a triple world champion. How do you feel? I still can't believe it. I mean, amazing final. Uh, Juan Carlos was unlucky with the flame out, but I mean, euros to him, worse to me. So, super, super good final. I mean, I crashed only one time, I think, and the car was just amazing. My dad and Nuno to the pit were incredible, so amazing job. Yeah, yeah, really. We were all, everyone was worried about the hour finally, worried about how the car would be at the end, but you just seemed 
serene the whole time. It just, no fit. it seems so easy. Yeah, I mean, the tyre the, the tire were amazing during the final. We didn't use this tyre during the, all the week because we knew that we have a little bit more, so we tried to work on the car, improve myself on the on the 10 minutes run, and yeah, the one hour was, was amazing. Car, engine, everything was just amazing, yes. Congratulations, celebrate your team. Fantastic event. A first triple, back to back to back, world champion. You will be world champion for at least eight years. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. Thank you, to, thank you to you guys. Thank you to everyone at home. Thank you to my girlfriend, family, everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Well, there you go. Oops. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> world champion again, Davide Ongaro, receiving the thanks of everyone and the press. And he's going to walk down now and receive the adulation of his team and everyone else. A worthy, worthy champion. BeachRC.com, the racer's one-stop online hobby shop. Choose from all the popular brands and variety in stock with super fast shipping and great customer service. BeachRC.com still has the local hobby shop feel with all the benefits of the internet. BeachRC.com is the exclusive distributor for Ultimate Racing S-Works. Pro Circuit Racing Tires, Nitro Lux Fuels, and Assault RC Performance Products. So fill up your cart and check out at BeachRC.com today.